But Paula, I met through this group, funny thing. Um, I wasn't here when she came, and then she was joining, and she had a little open house thing, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go check that out, because that's cool right up my alley. Met her, connected, um, love her as a person, and value what she does um, that she has to offer. I've seen her um, some several times with different things, and every time she just has been so helpful and brings things to my attention. I already know these things, but she brings them to me in a way that, and she's very honest in a very gentle way, which is really amazing. So I love just all that you do, and I love that you have so many different modalities to help um, heal a person's soul. So uh, Paula, thank you. welcome to the stage. Thank you. I don't know if I can talk that, really. <laughs> um, so, as I said, I, I am a holistic coach. So what that means, um, I do have a degree in psychology. Um, I got it a little bit later in life. I started it when I was young. Um, I actually even worked at UC Davis um, in the biopsychology lab um, doing a project for NASA. I thought that was the direction that I was going to go. I thought I was going to be a PhD psychologist. Um, life happened. I met a lot of PhD psychologists and decided, yeah, I don't want to be like that. <laughs> so I did continue psychology to the point where I felt comfortable with it. Um, then I had a decision if I wanted to continue going further with that. Um, but I decided to go into um, holistic health. And I'll explain that a little bit. But I find that it goes very well together. So the body, the mind, and the spirit are really so interconnected in anything and everything that we are feeling. Um, Dis-ease, mental um, issues, um, spiritual issues, they are combined. We are, we are beings that are kind of amazing, right? We're just not a mind that gets a little confused. We're not just a body that gets ill, but we have a, a higher self as well. And so I like to integrate both of those, or all three of those, um, when I'm working with a client. Some clients come in just for hypnotherapy. Um, I insist on a, a initial coaching um, before I do hypnotherapy because there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that go into what a person believes is wrong with them. So I like to look at the whole picture. Um, so I do work with mental, physical, and spiritual coaching. I do teaching and support as well. Um, my passion is public speaking, believe it or not. Um, and I would love to, I love to do classes and teach people different things. About me, um, my area of expertise, again, is I majored in biopsychology, so neuroanatomy and mental health combined. Um, I was trained in 1991 um, in hypnosis, but I actually certified under Dick Sutphin. Um, he used to be hypnotist to the stars back in 2008. And in 2018, I decided to complete more of my psychology degree and did go back to school. And again, that's when I got into integrative health. Um, so I am a, currently a PhD, working on a PhD. I'm, I'm actually just finishing master's right now um, <coughs> in integrative holistic health. So, um, and I combine the psychology with that if I can. Understanding the power of the mind to heal the body, um, along with nutrition, natural medicine, um, that's why I chose integrative health. Um, kind of my passion. So I see in here the whole person whenever I get them into my my office. Um, so I look at their I look at their physicality as much as I look at it, listen to what they're saying that they're coming to me for. Um, I notice clients if they start kind of twitching, I always ask, what's that? Where's that? Because a lot of the body um, issues actually come from holding on to mental um, issues or things that have happened in the past, trauma and things like that. Um, so I'm very fascinated with that and I love it when they get relief from those little aches and pains by just working on some issues. Um, so one of the things that with the, um, with what we called this with your assistant and she's so amazing, um, choices, practices, balances for happiness. Um, so what a lot of people forget you know, it's not, it, 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 you may know it, um, but you may forget it, is that happiness is a choice. It's a choice that we make every single day. 
we can choose happiness, we can choose health, right? We had a, a guy who is a, um, a coach for um, fitness. Right, Ryan. Ryan, yes, so you can choose fitness every day, but it is a choice and it's something that you have to make a decision for, right? You have to get up at 5.30 in the morning and go to the gym, or you have to change your diet, you have to go, you know, more fruits in the morning, vegetables forward, things like that to choose health. It's the same way with mental. We have a choice in everything that we do, um, the way that we think. So because we have free will, we can choose to do it or we can choose not to, right? Um, but a lot of my clients will come in and they'll say, I have this one little issue that I kind of want to work on. I usually find that there's a lot more. But working on that one issue actually gives them the power to understand their mind and understand that they actually can fix a lot of things out that the other issues, they kind of start to fold together. Um, and Apollo knows this, she's heard me say it about a million times, it's a pebble in the pond. Even if it's relationship issues, you throw that pebble out and if you're changing something within you, the ripple effect changes everybody around you. And um, there's so much to learn with that. Um, I get a lot of people coming in and they have a problem with a specific person. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. I love hearing about it. Let's, you know, and, and I can maybe even assess that person without them being there. Not really. <laughs> but they're not there. So let's work on you and see how we can change their behavior by changing your behavior. And, and it's amazing how it happens. And it happens so quickly. Um, so practices. So every time you make a choice, I, I choose to lose 20 pounds. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something for it, right? And if you're a Christian, you know that, that scripture that says uh, faith without works is dead. Think about that, even if it's not in a scripture context. You can have faith that something's going to happen, but you got to do something to make it happen. you got to put that energy forward to bring that action to you. So even the smallest tweaks can make the hugest changes in, in I don't even know if that was properly, proper English, but there you go. So, so balanced practices can bring about happiness. Um, and a lot of the things that I talk to my clients over um, is I, I do believe in diet changes. I think that small changes that we can do to our diet can actually make us happier because we're not feeling as, as weighted down. We're feeling lighter, we're feeling cleaner. So there's that. Um, I'm huge into meditation. I think meditation changed my life. I know I think it changed your life as well. Um, and hypnosis, I do a lot of self-hypnosis. I work on myself. I try to do it daily um, and hypnotize my mind and um, make the changes through that um, avenue. And what that is, is that's also a choice. And I, I actually gave a speech on that not too long ago. Um, we're hypnotized every day. Every day. <coughs> if you watch the news, you are being hypnotized. Either you are pro-Palestine or you are pro-Israel. Depending on whatever media you watch, right? Social Enjoy the propaganda. Propaganda. Whatever propaganda you watch. Social media. Social media. Facebook. Oh, I'm not thin enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not young enough, I, I need this, I need that. Um, that is hypnotizing you slowly but surely every day. So when I get clients who come in and go, oh, I've never been hypnotized before, I'm like, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> have. <laughs> not by me, maybe, but you have. Um, but I explain to them, this is hypnosis by choice. This is putting into your brain, your sweet little brain, <laughs> what you want. Not what they want. Not what marketing people want. No offense. <laughs> we love your marketing. <laughs> um, but what something that you want in your mind. Positive thinking. Releasing some negative thoughts. Moving forward in life. Sometimes you get stuck in a, in a rut. But, you know, we don't, we're not here very long. So we should be happy. And that's a choice. Um, so I'm very big into, into the meditation. And I don't know how my time is, so... Oh, Ten more minutes. Okay, let's go. Um, so a lot of times people will come to me 
Um, and they want to make small changes, either health, um, they have an objective that they want to meet, they have some emotions that they can't quite deal with. Um, I have people that come to me with lost memories. That's a big one. That's, that's usually hypnosis whenever I work with that. Um, circumstances, right? So we can get very stuck in our circumstances. But what's interesting is if we look at it from a different perspective, we understand that those circumstances are temporary, but there's so much that we can glean from it, so much that we can learn. Um, I share this. I went through an 18-year custody battle. I didn't know that I could survive it, to be honest. I, I really just didn't know if my body, my mind, my heart could handle it. Um, I did, and now I look back on it. The gifts that I got from it, the way that it molded me, it changed me, changed my heart, changed the way I, I look at people, changed the way I interact with people. It was horrible, but it was such a gift. And it's interesting whenever we can look at the things that caused us greatest pain, we can get the greatest gifts from. So it's always just a matter of, I always say the click. It's the click. Just a different perspective of thinking of a situation. Some people come to me for goals or um, don't feel that they're living in their, um, they don't believe that they're living their best life. They don't believe they're living their purpose, okay? So this is interesting, I ha I, and I'll just share this. And I asked her beforehand if I could share it. I have this beautiful woman that comes to me often. Um, she's in her early 60s. She lost her husband. Um, so she's very financially set. She can do pretty much what she wants. Um, she doesn't work. I, I should introduce her to Lee. <laughs> um, she does not work. She volunteers her time. So she, am I up? <laughs> she volunteers her time. It's not me. Jackie's up. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> she volunteers her time um, at AA, and she because she's got 34 years of sobriety. She volunteers her time at church, and she volunteers her time at a, a, a nutrition a nutrition place of a friend's. She comes into me yesterday, and she is just down, <coughs> down, down. And I don't understand because I've known her as, and I, I used to refer to her as spinning. She had so much energy and all this. And she had something that triggered a past pain. And she doesn't know what her purpose is. And she's a young 64. I mean, super young, fit, everything. Um, goes to the gym every day. And so I said, is volunteering your time at AA Church and the nutrition place bringing you joy? Just no, I'm filling my time. So I was like, why? You don't, I mean, we don't have a lot of time on this earth. Why are you filling it with fluff, emptiness, Facebook, social media? Why are you filling your moments? And she's like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. So I said, what's your passion? What did you want to do before you got into escrow and got into her, her husband's business? She said, I don't know. I love helping people. At, at, she had an automotive company. She says, I love just driving the people home when their car was being worked out because we get to talk and I could help them do something, get home, <laughs> right? Um, she says, that's what I like to do. I like to give. So I said, okay. What about, because she also wants love in her life. So I said, okay, what about going to a convalescent home with a little, because I asked her about flowers. She said, I love arranging flowers. It brightens up my house. So what if you took a beautiful arrangement to a convalescent home, went to the front desk and asked, who here doesn't receive a lot of visitors? Who could benefit from these flowers? She said, okay. It, it took a while, but we got very excited. Um, so I said, you have to do it today. You have to go to the convalescent home today and, and scope it out. So she calls me an hour after her appointment and she says, I go there there's nobody at the desk, but I noticed that there was one of my old clients sitting on a couch by themselves that I used to drive home. So she remembered her name. She walks up. I don't know what her name was. She walks up and says, do you live here now? And she, they get to talking. And she said, yeah. She goes, can I come back and visit you? And I said, anytime, anytime. 
So her, so she finished her homework very fast within an hour of our appointment. So I said, okay, next week the homework is to have her introduce you to some other people, to go around and find people who don't have loved ones coming and entertaining them because we all need that connection. And I was explaining to her that with the law of attraction, basically, when you give love, you're gonna get it boomerang right back in your face 10 times over the joy that you're gonna get from giving that. So that was one of my clients, simple, just didn't know what was making her so sad. She's so excited now, <laughs> she's got a mission. So um, making a choice, doing the actions, it gives people hope. And uh, everybody here, I, I know all of you from here and, and you're all wonderful people, but we all get down at times. We all lose our perspective, our, our um, our purpose sometimes. Sometimes we're doing things just for money, just to support our families. We're not doing it for passion. Um, I do this for passion. My background was in finance <laughs> for many years because that supported my family. But I always loved this and always pursued psychology. So um, I'm finally living in my passion. I would not say that it's bringing me the financial success it's quite like I used we'll to, there. but we're gonna get there. <coughs> I'm very confident in that and believe in that, that putting forward. Um, so I only have a few more minutes, but I don't know if anybody has, or one more minute or something, if anybody has any questions. I always have a lot of questions, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I could take the next hour. I know, and you have, a, you have your That degree. was a great presentation. Yeah, yeah. I was really moved by that story. Thank you. But uh, question, this is a serious question. I have clients come to me and say, okay, should I just set, give you all of my papers and you can look at them? So that's like such a narrow view of what they need right. or what I can provide. But you said something that's interesting. So sometimes people say, I only have one problem. Give me an example, <laughs> how, do you, how do you make that transition to maybe something broader or something else? So usually if somebody comes in and just says, I, I have a, a problem with uh, my partner. I'm like, okay, well, let's look at that. It's, it's always a little bit more than that. Did you, did you ever have anything like that in a previous relationship? Did you ever have, is this something that you maybe carried over from a parental kind of patient, uh, uh, relationship? So we kind of break it down to look at it, and then they realize that maybe some of the things that they're that they're having problems with that it also relates back to work relationships. So I usually kind of just delve into it um, because a lot of people will come into me with their story. And I always say, I don't need the whole story. I really don't. You know, their energy kind of tells me a lot of things in there. Um, I'm, I'm feeling that too, but you don't always need the paperwork, the whole story. So let's just look at that and let's kind of delve in. And it's amazing because it's like a domino effect. You pick on, or a scab, you pick that little scab and a whole bunch of stuff other comes out. Um, so it's usually just, you know, I, I'm, for your instance, I, you know, I'm, I kind of am broad range. I, I want to look at the whole picture, but not necessarily what the numbers are on paper. I want to get to know you, and I know you do that anyway. You know, having a social work background really helps me in that regard. That was a great answer, thank you. I will, I will just say that, um, uh, I notice like when I'm sitting in session, it'll be, she'll ask me a question, do you see this or do you have this feeling or whatever? And I'll be like, no. She goes, okay, well, I'm gonna ask you that question again. And so it's kind of like, you know, if somebody asks you a question, no, and then you move on. But it's like, Paula's like, no, we're coming back right here. And then you're like, oh, oh, oh. And then you broke that, broke the skin basically to go, oh, okay, I can see that. It's just really interesting. And I've been through a lot of stuff. Uh, and a lot of um, coaching and stuff like that over my years and counseling and stuff. And n nobody operates the way that she does. It's, uh, it, I don't know, it's just, it just works. Me? Yeah. I kind of love, I kind of love people for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> that shows. Oh, thank you. Um, what is an appointment with a, a psychologist? Not, what does that look like? So a psychologist or me? Uh, it, more general, because I think that a lot of people are um, afraid yeah. to um, bear their soul. Yeah. 
So I'm a little different than working with a psychologist. Um, I tend to like to get to an issue um, and work it out and, and, and maybe not keep you in the seat for years and years to kind of going over your childhood. We can, we can absolutely find out a cause. I always do it back to the cause of a certain situation. Um, I am not a licensed therapist, so I, I have the education, but I did not sit for a license. Um, I do not, I do not believe that we are able to box people, um, put them in a category. Um, you are this, you have this, you're, you need this medicine. I kind of work a little bit differently. I believe in the power of the mind. I believe in the power of the body to heal. I believe in us. I believe that we are spirits. I believe we were created in the image of our creator. I believe that. I believe that we have perfection within us and that is always a possibility. I work with quantum physics, so I work on possibility. And um, I think in psychology, when you go to a psychologist, they are looking for somewhat like a doctor. They look at the symptoms and um, they might diagnose. I, I don't do that. I, I sometimes see things and I'm like, okay, if I were a psychologist, I might diagnose this, but I try not to work in that aspect. So that's kind of the difference. Um, and I think wherever you get help, it, it's so important. I have a coach. I, I, you know, I'm great at looking at other people. Sometimes it's harder to look at ourselves. I, I was kind of asking, what does it look like? What is it? Describe uh, like a, a session. A session? So with uh, for a, oh, with Paula? Oh yeah, that's yeah. different. <laughs> and it's different every time because I'm really working with the individual. Seated in a chair? Do you have an office? I do have yeah. an office. I do. Yes. And, and that's kind of where I, yeah. you know. I actually have a center. So I have a center for when I'm doing trainings, group hypnosis, um, uh, different things. So I have a, a large area where people can come and gather, um, almost like a yoga studio, really. Um, and I have my office where I study. And then I have an office for clients so with a couch, two chairs. Um, so sometimes people come and sit in the chair and some people go to the couch. And that's interesting and telling as, as well. But usually what it does is um, people will start talking and they'll, they'll come in with an idea. I want to do hypnotherapy. It's, it's interesting. I've had a client who came in for hypnotherapy. Um, I assessed her. She was not um, a good candidate for hypnotherapy, but she was a candidate for nutrition and weight loss. So um, I put her on a weight loss program. Um, her first week she lost 11 pounds because she, I, I assessed her for having some heart conditions and things like that. Uh, sleep apnea and narcolepsy, believe it or not. So the hypnotism was very hard <laughs> with the narcoleptic. <laughs> 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 they go down real fast. <laughs> I like them a little conscious. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Can yeah. I just say that in my in listening to you and just listening to you when I speak to you and listening to you speak today, um, the whole thing to me there's a whole labeling issue. I call it an issue. Um, I unfortunately had a label that I held on to for a really long time, kind of not as an excuse, but like, okay, well, this helps me to say, okay, be, give myself a little bit of grace. But then it's like, at what point do you let that go, that label? You know, it's old now. So I love the way Paula works with that and will even call out those. It's like, okay, is it time to let that go? And, um, and then you get back to the choices and forgiveness and other things that the way that she works makes it visible to say oh my gosh yes I can see that you know I can work through this it's like oh you know it's very freeing so I really appreciate Paula um, very very different from others uh, definitely um, in the so yeah very very different the way that you work and, you, and, and actually even if you don't come to me or go to somebody like me um, there's a lot of things you can do for yourself. You ask yourself the Socratic questions. Is this true? Just, just this, like a thought that you have in your mind. Is this true? Is it based in experience, reality? Is it something from my past and what I'm thinking? People get these ideas of who they are. And the brain will wire a certain way to keep you convinced that that's what you are. But there's a choice to change that wiring as well. There's a choice.
Um, I hate to cut you off because I could like go for another hour. Yeah, that would be awesome. totally great with it. But um, it is time. Yes, very good. Thank you.